Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I have turned on my webcam early today because I'm going to attempt a puzzle that fills me with fear. Uh, this one on the screen is called Fishnet and it's by Totally Normal Cat. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, if you've been following us for a few months, you will know that Totally Normal Cat is, well, totally abnormal in terms of their setting ability an extraordinary constructor, uh, just a mind that is has a planet-sized brain. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've looked at this one. So I'll show you, um, we got an email about this one from Aaron Fisher. So hopefully you can read that. But what it says is, uh, this puzzle has a very difficult break-in, but it's also one of, if not the most beautiful break-ins I've ever seen. There is a non-zero chance this could lead to a failed video, but I think it's worth a shot. Uh, if the video is successful, you'll look like a mad genius. Good luck, Aaron. Well, I would like to look like a mad genius, um, but yeah, I mean, I've put this into the software just now and it's ridiculous. This is a thermo. This is a thermo Sudoku. That's it. So all the rules are that digits have to increase from the bulb end of these thermos. Nothing else. There's no knight's move constraint. <laughs> um, we do get some givens, I suppose. But if you compare, actually, it's quite an interesting thought. If you compare this puzzle to yesterday's puzzle by Joseph Namer, which Mark was definitely trolling. I spoke to Mark yesterday. He said, oh, yes, he may have been joking with his 10 minute time frame uh, that he suggested for a video that took me 40 minutes. Um, but th that puzzle, in fact, let me just find it. Let me get it. Right, so there's Joseph's puzzle from yesterday. And you can see, although there's less given digits, there are enormous thermos in this, uh, relatively anyway, and two diagonals. Now compare and contrast. This has four tiny, literally tiny thermos, three cells long. Um, yeah, so we'll have a go at this anyway in a moment. Now, what I need to do, though, I need to, a couple of things I, I want to mention. Um, I want to talk to Reuben Jones. Now, Reuben, I think it was your eighth birthday yesterday, and I wanted to say a very, very happy birthday to you. I cannot tell you how, I suppose, proud Mark and I are to hear that there are children as young as seven or eight years old who actually watch the channel and get a lot from it. That is really, really heartening for us. Um, and yeah, mad props to you for being, you know, so young and able to follow all of this logic. It's really, really impressive. Um, and yeah, thanks to your mummy, Rebecca, for letting us know about that. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to mention is, of course, we are very close to the start of March. And if you're a patron of the channel on the start on the first day of March, 4 p.m. UK time, you'll be able to get hold of our new Sudoku hunt that we're busy preparing. It's uh, I'm not we're not really busy preparing. It is ready. It's ready to go. And um, yeah, we got, I think, 1700 entries to last month's patron reward. So we want to try and beat that this month. It is approachable again, I promise. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. So check that out in a couple of days time. Now, that's it. Now I can delay no longer. We have to try and solve this fishnet puzzle. So the rules are normal Sudoku rules apply. Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. That is it. So if this square was a two, we would know that this square had to be higher than two. Let's make it four. And this square has to be higher than four. Let's make it six. There you go. That would be a legitimate way of filling this thermo. And if you're thinking that doesn't seem to be much of a restriction, you'd be quite correct. So <laughs> do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And my only thought is this must be about ones and nines because I can't see how these thermos restrict anything anything else really uh, and why do i say ones and nines well it's simply because if you think about the nature of a one uh, in relation to a thermometer the one could only ever go in the bulb that would be the only place it could go because uh, if you put a one halfway along a thermo you've got to put a zero in the bulb and that's not a legitimate sudoku digit similarly if you put a nine anywhere on a thermo other than a tip and it's quite interesting that the nines are being ruled out from the tips down here um, 
then it won't work either because if you put nine there you've got to somehow put ten in there and not even spend software will let us do that so so one yeah i mean one is definitely restricted a little bit in at least this column and maybe that column I can't go there there or there so let's look at this so one one in column three can't can only go i suppose there there and there i think all the other cells are either seeing the given one in the grid or are on thermos so we get three possible cells for ones in column three and i think that logic is virtually symmetrical in column seven can't put one here because of the given one so it's those three cells in column seven now column five is the other cell where we've got prongs of the what's it called fishnet these look well these look like little tuning forks to me uh, but one can't go there so yeah okay so we almost get something interesting we get we get a finned swordfish on ones in those three columns um now if you're not familiar with weird sudoku terminology why am i calling this a fin swordfish well there's a pattern if i delete that cell uh, this pattern here where a digit is restricted in three columns for example to exactly three rows is called a swordfish and it is an interesting pattern because well it isn't actually this is this is already interesting i can see what this is doing this is getting rid of ones from all of the bulbs which is that might be very very interesting so let me explain what's going on here these are the positions for ones now let's deal with the easy way round so let's imagine that this cell was a one now i think we could all agree if that cell was a one none of the bulbs could contain a one that's fairly obvious so what about if this cell was not a one well that would mean that we have a classic swordfish pattern which is this one and if we have a classic swordfish pattern if you're not familiar with swordfishes i will explain how to think about them so what we know is that in column three column five and column seven the ones in those columns are restricted to exactly three rows of the puzzle. Now I want to ask a very facetious question to make sure everyone understands the implication of this. And that is how many ones are we expecting there to be in row four of this puzzle if we finish it correctly? Now the answer is one. How many ones are we expecting there to be in row six of this puzzle if we finish it correctly? The answer again is one. And how many ones are we expecting in row nine? Again, the answer is one. So I know that in these three rows combined there are exactly three ones but i also know that in these nine squares there are exactly three ones and that's because that in this column there must be a one in one of those in this column there must be one in one of these and in this column there must be one in one of these so if i come back to thinking about these rows again the three ones that live in these three rows must be in the blue cells and therefore none of the other cells in these rows could contain a one because if they did that would be a fourth one in three rows of the puzzle and the rules of sudoku tell us that's impossible so if none of these cells these highlighted cells i'll give them a yellow so that they stick out a bit more if none of these cells can be one all of these are in the are covering the bulbs of the thermometers in box five so that actually is already quite interesting. So none of these can be a one. So there are at least two, three, four, and five, because they all have to be different because they see each other. Now, how high can they be? That's the next question. Yeah, I mean, you certainly can't put eight into any, any of them. They're all, they're, they've all got two cells above the bulb on the thermo. I'm wondering about seven. No, you can't put seven in that one. If you put seven in this one, you'd have to put eight, nine on both thermos. 
and that's going to result in clashes. So that one can't be seven. This one, no, that one can't be seven either because there, were, there have to be three digits in column seven that are higher than seven. And in a Sudoku, there are only two digits that are higher than seven, and that's the digit eight and the digit nine. So if you put seven there, let me explain what that means. You could go eight, nine, but then what are you going to put here? Nothing. So that doesn't work. So seven can't go in those two. And by symmetry, because I have noticed these are all symmetrical, that must follow through to those two at the bottom. So it's not possible to put seven in this. We have, we have almost got this. This is, these digits are two, three, four, five, or possibly six. Now I'm just gonna check six. If this is six, see this given eight is looking interesting. If that's six, Uh, how's that going to work? That's impossible, isn't it? If that's six. I can't put eight into those squares. So I can put nine in one of them. In fact, let's put nine in this one because that allows me to put eight here. But now, yeah, now I've got eight and nine in this row. So this, ca this has to be a maximum size of seven but there aren't any digits between six and seven to put in that cell. So that doesn't work either. So you can't put six in here. Now, can you put six in this one? And oh, the problem with this though, is that that's relying on this being an eight and the symmetry might be different with this being a nine. Oh, no, 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 I'm going wrong. I'm going wrong. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, that two now. Wow, okay. Okay, that is brilliant, right. We have a sequential. Yeah, we do. We've got a sequential fin swordfish. <laughs> this is very strange, but we use the one to eliminate ones from the bulb. And that, I think, is now going to allow us to use two to make another fin swordfish. And that's because once these bulbs are at least equal to two, you now can't put two on any of the thermos anymore. So now if we, if we think about where two goes in columns three, five and seven, aren't we going to get exactly the same pattern we got for ones? upside down obviously because the ones and the twos are upside down let me just have a look at this so two now is in one of those three positions in column three it's in one of yeah it's in one of those three positions or well, four positions in column five and it's got to be in one of these three positions in column seven and again we can ask the facetious questions either this is a two in which case two is eliminated from all the bulbs, or it is not a two. And if it is not a two, we get a swordfish pattern. And that means for exactly the same logic as before, in these three rows here, the twos are confined to the purple cells. Therefore, these cells cannot be twos. So, so now, now we have a quadruple in box five, on three, four, five, and six. And that, well, I'm not sure if that's the break in, but if it is, that is every bit. What did, what did Aaron Fisher say? A very difficult break in, but also one of, if not the most beautiful break ins I've ever seen. Well, that's certainly very beautiful. It's ridiculously clever. It's ridiculously clever that you can iterate this, the effect of the swordfishes the finned swordfish is no less. So it's an iterated finned swordfish. That is not something, that's not a sentence I've ever said before. <laughs> totally normal cat as usual, blows everyone's mind. Um, now, well now, hang on, didn't I work out this couldn't be a six? Hang on, do we need the purples now? Probably not, but if that's a six, no, yeah, we worked out this couldn't work, didn't we? Because 
there's only three digits higher than six. And given the eight here, I'd have to put a nine in one of those, and then the other digit, the other digit won't work. That is not a six. And I was checking whether this could be a six. Right, so let's have a think about whether this can be a six. If this is a six, these are, well, hmm, yes, that might work. Those three digits have to be higher than six, so they have to be seven, eight, and nine, which actually would force, if this was a six, it would force seven, nine, eight, wouldn't it? Because this given seven is forcing the seven upwards, and seven can't be at the tip of the thermo because we can't put six and a half on it. So if that has to be seven, that cannot be eight, so that would be forced. So that would be rather, well, it'd be rather cute if that was correct. Does it work the same way there? No. Well, maybe actually. Oh, uh, if that's a six, then you've got to put nine here, and that would have to be seven, eight. Yeah, it does work. It's just a different order. So these two can be sixes. Can this one be a six? The answer is probably not because I feel like this nine is doing the same as this eight. It's, yeah, no, this doesn't work because you can't put nine in the tip. You've got to put eight in the tip and sevens are going to clash and eights are going to clash. That's not going to work, is it? Or oh, everything clashes. So that's not a six. So six is in one of those two cells. And one of these strings of digits is one of these strings of digits is seven, eight, nine. You know what I'm wondering about now? I'm wondering about that four. I don't know whether I'm right. This this four is. I'm suddenly worrying about it in terms of finned swordfishes, because what we can't have is another finned swordfish on fours. Because if we had a finned swordfish on fours the way we had it on ones and twos, then that's locking four out of the circles. But we know there is a four in a circle. Yeah, I see. So what we've learned, what we learned from that is that because we must have a four in a circle, we can't have a finned swordfish on fours. And that means that at least one of these thermos must have a four on it. Because if there was no four, we would have a finned swordfish again. And that four has to go on the thermo that has a three in its bulb. Yeah, okay, and because three is so close to four in terms of its numerical proximity being the next digit up. Well, yeah, one of these is a three and it's gonna have exactly one four on its, on its, well, possibly multiple thermos. If that was a three, you could put one four in one of those two, but only one, because if you put one there, you can't put one here. And you obviously can't put one there because that's not going to be able to be three and a half. And I think it probably works the same way for this one. If this is a three, I can put a four here, but now I can't put a four in those two. Similarly, if that's a four, I can't put a four down here. So yeah, so there's exactly one three in these four cells and there's exactly one four on that three's thermo to avoid a fin sword fish, which will give us a problem with the bulbs. It's all quite straightforward. <laughs> Not. Uh, right, so. So what does this mean? We've worked out sixes in one of these squares. We've worked out one of these triples is seven, eight, nine. Um, is there a way of working out which one is which? That is my next question. 
So if I don't actually know how to think about this, I'm just going to check. If this is six, we know that's seven, that's nine, that's eight. What's that doing to the world? It's removing the ability of this to be five. Because if this is five, these digits have to be higher than five. And there are not five digits higher than five in this column. You see, all if this is five, all these digits have to be higher than five. Because six is higher than five, and five is five. And there are not, there are only six, seven, eight, nine available. So that's not five. If this is six, that's not five. If this is six, that's the same. So yes, because of the symmetry, we can rely on that. If this is six, that's not five. I'm just wondering if this is six, can that be five? If that's five, I'd have to put, no, that's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. I'm not sure it's gonna work the same way with symmetrically though. But if that's, if that's five, how do you fill those two digits in, given they can't be eight or nine? The answer is you can't, because these have to be selected from as a maximum of six and seven. Well, they can't both be seven, so one of them must be a six, and that's not gonna work, because you're gonna have to put a digit between six and five in the row. So, so if this is six, that is five. Right, that's interesting. What about if that's six? Does it, well, it definitely works the same way in the column. That can't be five. But does it work the same way there? Can that be five? If this is six, that's got to be nine. This has got to be seven, eight. Ah, that's beautiful. Good, great. Yeah, it's exactly the same. It worked. The numbers shuffle around a bit differently. But the point is that if that's six, you get an eight there. And now I've got eight and nine looking at those two squares. So the maximum value of these two squares is six and seven. And one of them being a six will not help us because we won't have a value for the intermediate digit. So this doesn't work. So this, so if this is six, that's, this is five. And if this is six, that's five, bingo, right. So that is a five, six pair, which means that this is, a three, four pair. Now, now we're gonna have loads of high digits in these positions, but we're not going to know. We're not going to know exactly what, are we? Now, you'll, you'll notice at this point that I have not had to pencil mark any thermometers yet. So pencil mark, who's probably sniggering away if he's watching this video. I'm not still not doing it. Although maybe I should, certainly maybe I should pencil mark these two. Problem is, These two I don't think are very restricted at all. I mean, I suppose, I'm not sure. If this is six, that becomes seven and that becomes nine and that becomes eight. If this is six, that becomes nine and that becomes seven and that becomes eight. But what about if this is five on the other hand? If this is five, I know these three digits have to be from six, seven, eight, and nine. I don't think that's, this would be six then. That would be nine. This would be eight. And this would be seven. So the nines, you're, oh, okay, maybe that's the point. You always, 
I might, I think I'm going to have to pencil mark these because I think what I'm concluding is, actually I might not be concluding it, but what I'm, what I'm thinking about is if it was this way round, you end up with a nine here and you can't put an eight or a nine on the prongs of this tuning fork. And I think if that was six, I ended up with an eight here. So I couldn't put eight or nine on the end of this tuning fork. So I think that we've got to, we've got to think about this. So if this is six, that's the nine, that's seven and eight. Yeah, so we get nine, eight here. This cannot be nine and eight. Uh, oh, but hang on. So if that's six, that's five. No, but that, oh, no, no, no. I think I'm going around in circles. I'm so sorry about this. I feel like I'm not, I'm not quite understanding what I'm meant to do. Um, let me just think about this. Let's just try and step back a bit and think about what we've learned. We have learned that We've got a three, four, five, six quadruple in the middle box. I've learned which the two high digits are, but I don't know which way round they go. And I don't think I know enough about the one that doesn't have the six on it. So if that's six and that's five, do I know anything about this one? I know these three digits are high digits. They're from six, seven, eight, and nine. But I don't think I even know that this needs to be nine, do I? Why couldn't that be seven, that be six, and that be eight or nine? I think that's perfectly fine. So I'm not, there's something here I'm not getting. And yeah, of course I could pencil mark the thermos. Maybe that's what I've got to do. All right, let's do that. So six. This can be six, seven, eight. I think it can be all of those things, can't it? That's five. Don't see why. I mean, it can't be nine because this can't be 10. And this digit therefore has to be seven, eight, seven or nine only. Okay, so that digit is quite restricted. This cell though, that can be six, eight or nine. And this is where it's gonna get silly. I mean, this cell can be five, six, seven. Can't be eight, I suppose, because that's going to force this to be a nine. So five, six, or seven. Oh. Am I going to get a... Oh, okay, I am. Right, okay. Now look at this column. That's a quintuple on five, six, seven, eight, and nine, I think. In fact, where does five go in this column now? Oh, bobbins. Okay, I could have got this before if I'd done a bit more pencil marking. But I think that's... Yeah, I think it's just true, isn't it? Doesn't this... This has to be a quintuple because every digit on this... Uh, in this run of digits has to be higher than, in fact, they have to be higher than four because we can't put four into either of these squares because of the givens. So these are a quintuple and the only place that five can go therefore is here, good grief. So that's a five. Weirdly, that's our first digit, but that doesn't actually do anything. It's the only five in the grid now and it doesn't affect this one or this one. That's so strange, that's so strange. Um, well, okay, but what it's telling me is I probably need to do, it's not gonna be as powerful in column three. It's just not because I don't have the same given up here, removing the ability of one of these to be a four. This is so strange. Okay, so this is, oops, it's not six. It might be six, but I don't know it's six. Six, seven, or eight, eight or nine, I think for that one. Six, seven, this can't be eight because that would force this to be nine, which would break. So that's got to be seven or eight. So actually these two are quite restricted. 
Right, and that one can be four, five, six, seven. And this one can be five, six, seven, or nine. I see this is horrible. <laughs> this one can be four, five, six, seven, or eight. Good grief. And this one can be five, six, seven, or nine. And this one can be four, five, six, seven. It can't be eight because that would force a nine here. Five, six, seven, or eight into that one. You can see why I don't like doing this. I mean, this is just very hard. I mean, I suppose it got me the five. I suppose it rules a five out from that one as well. Um, doesn't do anything to this one. Five is now in one of three positions in box seven. Ah, aha, that is an interesting point. I have spotted something about that cell. That cell is not nine because didn't I work out that whichever one of those is six, you get a nine here or a nine here, I thought. I'm now questioning myself. I thought on this one I got the 9 there. Why did I think this could be a 9? Uh, you've got to be really careful with this. this is, because although this, the straight pencil mark is true, there is a relationship between these three cells and this cell that we need to take into account. Because it's... N yeah, if this is 6... You can't put 7 here, so you have to put 7 here, and then this can't be 8. So if this is 6, that's 9. And if this is 6, because you can't put 9 there, that's 9, yeah. So 9 is in one of those two positions, depending on which one of these is 6. So what that means is that this cell can simply never be 9, because if it was 9, it would rule 9 out of both the valid positions, and one of these must be a 6. Good grief. So this is down to 6 or 8 and now that's a 9 in the column 6, 7, 8, triple good grief so that's a 9 <laughs> now we've got 5 six, oh well that's huge yeah that's very nice oh and does that mean that can't be a 9 and I've got two thoughts now one of them is the 5, 6, 7's here so this is shifting the opportunities for these penultimate cells downwards isn't it this this is a maximum of seven now so this can't be seven or eight this can't be seven um ah there's a little point that can't be six now because if that's six, this is seven, and that cell has no value. So that's not six. So, oh, no, it don't. Mm -hmm. Now, I was just thinking, if this is nine, does that mean that's not nine? If, that, if, if this is six, that's nine. This is five. Oh, five, six, seven. No, oh, yeah, okay, you can have nine in both of those, I think. So, what does this mean? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but it is very interesting. I'm, I'm really, to be honest, I'm fairly flabbergasted. I've got this far in this puzzle because this... It just doesn't seem to be very realistic that you could r reduce these, you know, these four, th four bulbs and their very minuscule thermos by so much. If that's six, that's nine, that's eight. That would remove eight from these two. That's six. If that's six, that's eight. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do the same with eight. So whichever one of these is six, if that's six, because you have to hide the nine in box four, the eight has to go here. So that would be eight. And if this is six, because you have to hide the seven in box three, 
that must be the 8. So there is an 8 in one of these two positions, which means this square is not an 8. Bingo. Well, I say bingo. It's not actually done anything. It felt like that was bingo. Um, ah. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Right. If this... Yeah, I can get rid of 8 from this one. If this is 8, where does 8 go in box 5? And the answer is in one of those two cells. Looking at this cell. The alternative to this being 8 is that this is 8. Because we know there's an 8 in one of the purples. So either the 8 is here, forcing an 8 here and looking at this cell. Or this is just an 8. This is never able to be an 8, therefore. And that is beautiful because now, look at that, I've got a 4, 5, 6, 7 quadruple in column 5. And, oh, nearly. And this not being able to be 8 means that can't be 7, of course. So now one of these two cells must be a 4. And one of these two cells must be a seven. <laughs> Bill is is right. It's teetering now, isn't it? It's teetering on the on the verge of telling us how its secrets work. Oh, that can't be eight anymore now, because those two see that one as well. So that's not eight. Oh. So where does 8 go in this? This is ridiculously clever. Good grief. So you can do the thing with the 9 and you get the 9 in this quintuple. Oh, this isn't a quintuple. Ah, no, no, no. Ignore me. I was thinking this was a quintuple. It very nearly is. It is if I can get that cell not to be equal to 4. Then it's a quintuple. So if that's a 4, that's an 8. Oh, bobbins. Okay, I can't quite do it. Um, so, how do we do this? Uh, um, how do we make more progress with this naughty puzzle? Three in this column is restricted. It's got to be in one of two places. Don't have a very good way of pencil marking that because it's they're obviously across boxes, so um Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. I've just had an epiphany. I've literally just had an epiphany. I've got tears in my eyes. I've just spotted something. Oh my goodness me. Right. Oh, that is magnificent. That is magnificent. Good grief. Good grief. Right. Let's go back to the iterative finned swordfish version of the world. Where we said that... This four needed to be careful because we cannot make a fin swordfish on fours or we couldn't put four in the bulbs. I then said, yes, well, that's fine because one of these bulbs is a three and it must have a four on its thermometer. But we also said it must only have one four on it can only have one four on its thermometers because wherever its four goes, it will see the other pos possible positions for fours. So let's look at this one. If that's a three, we can put a four in one of these positions only, but whichever one is a four, it removes the ability of the other one to be a four. So there is exactly one four on this whole proliferation of thermos. Well, apart from in the bulbs, there's a, there's a four in the bulbs and there's one on the stems somewhere. Now, we've just discovered this is a four, five, six, seven, quadruple therefore there is a four in one of these cells and if there's a four in one of these cells 
There cannot be fours on any other stem. It's impossible. It's impossible. Let's just prove that to ourselves. If this is a four, this is a three, therefore that is a four and that is not a four. If, on the other hand, this is a four, then self-evidently this cannot be a four. So this is not able to be a four, so it is a five. And that means that this was a this was a quintuple and that means that squares an eight holy moly um that's now not a five oh I'm pressing the wrong buttons um i've got a four six pair in column five so that's not six and that's not six i've now got a five seven pair in column five Good grief. Good grief. So now... Now that squares a three. <laughs> we are just in the presence of a ludicrously clever creature. Totally normal cat is not... There is nothing normal about totally normal cat. How do I know that this is a three? Well, it's because now we've discovered this is these are quintuples on high digits. The gaps are all low digits, and that's very interesting in the bottom row because basically these are all ones, twos, threes, and fours. I'm going to actually green them to remind me of that. Those are green as well. Um, because that's, I'm, I'm trying to tell myself these are low digits, but those in the bottom row C2 and 4. So they're a 1, 3 pair, and that can't be a 3. If that can't be a 3, it removes its ability to be yellow, and 3 goes up there. <laughs> we can get rid of 1s from these. We've now got a 2, 4 pair in the top row. There's got to be an 8 over there by Sudoku. There's got to be... No, we can't do the same with 9. So, hmm, okay. 7, okay, where... No, yeah, where does 7 go in the middle box? It's got to go in one of those two cells, which means this square is not able to be 7 anymore. Uh, oh, hang on. I've got a six, seven pair in this column. Sorry, I've only just noticed that, but that means this square's a nine. Oh, so these were both nines. So whichever one of these is six didn't determine which one of these was nines because the five also has a nine in the equivalent position. So nine is now vertical in, in box five it's got to be in one of those two positions so the other the gap cells now are not oh they can be eight i said oh yeah okay what what are the options for these two cells well they can be ones and twos that's fine but they can't be three four five six seven or nine so they're one two or eight but this one sees one and two because there's a one, two, three, four quadruple in its um, in its row. I can make those green as well. I've just thought. So that's got to be eight. That's not eight anymore. One or two goes in the middle. These cells in the middle of the grid are one, two, and nine in some order. These cells are a seven and eight pair in the, bo in the middle of the box. Now we're getting somewhere. This is six now. And if that's six, that must be the five. Here we go. So that's the six. That's the seven. This is not, oh, this six means that's a seven. This means that's an eight. Oh, please keep going. Seven here means that's a five. So that's a four. So this is a three. So that's a four. So that's a six. That's a seven. And that's a six. And we've got the thermos done. We have actually got them done. Um, yeah, they're done. They are done, I think. Right, so we can get rid of the yellow at the top there. Do I go, am I going to keep going with this um, this green highlighting? 
Is that actually necessary anymore? The answer is I don't know. I can see I can get rid of some fours from those two. I can get rid of threes from those two. Three must be in that domino. So now this is Sudoku, isn't it? That we have done. We've done the complicated part. I think that's right. So if it's Sudoku, Simon, wake up and do Sudoku. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. This square is restricted. It sees awfully an awfully lot. That's a naked single, in fact. It sees one, two, three, four in the row. It sees five, six in the box, and it sees eight, nine in the column. That's eight digits, so that's got to be a seven. So now seven is in one of those two positions. I've just noticed the eight here. <laughs> when I was looking at the sevens, I immediately thought of the eight. So now we've got a seven, eight pair over on the left-hand side of the grid. And a seven, given seven, tells us the order. So that's seven, that's eight. So eight is in one of those two cells. These cells in box one are twos, threes, fours, and nines. Oh. That's a bit annoying. I thought that might be resolved. I can see that one's not nine, obviously. And that one, in fact, is not two either. So this is three or four. That one's not two. I suspect we might... Well, what about those two cells? Because those two cells see one, two, three, four, seven in the row and eight, nine in the box. So unless I'm going crazy, which is totally possible, these squares have got to include a 5 and they've got to include a 6. So these squares have got to be an 8-9 pair. And somehow, some way, we don't know the order of that. It's mad, but we don't. Okay, well that's still good. That's, that is still good. Um... Now, what should we look at now? I'm tempted to look at the bottom row where I've also got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 quintuple. So we're looking at 5, 6, 7s and 9. So that square is only able to be 5s or 6s. 5, 6, 7 or 9. 5, 6, 7 or 9. So 6. Oh, it's not 6. So this is just 7 or 9. That's 6, 7 or 9, I think. And this is not. This is just 6 or 8. Oh, so, no, hang on, it's not 8. I've already got 8 here. So what is this? 5, 6 or 9. Sorry, 6 or 9. 5, 6. So the 7 is in one of those two, but we don't know the order. Oh, okay. So this is still... It's still resisting slightly. Five I can place in box two by Sudoku. It's got to go here. So ones, twos, and fours are the spare digits that we need to place. That's no longer a four. So we've got a one or a two here. There's got to be a four vertical in this column, uh, which is useless. Um, five, five, that's a five by Sudoku. So that's a five by Sudoku. That's a five by Sudoku. That's a five and a six. We've done all the fives. We have. Okay, so now this six might do work. So yes, it's giving us a nine here. It's giving us a seven here. It's giving us a six here. And that seven is fixing the seven and the eight, which is fixing the eight and the nine at the top. Now there must be a nine here by Sudoku. We're left with ones, twos, and threes in this box. Don't lose your voice, Simon, before you finish this puzzle, please. Don't have a power cut. Don't have a power cut. Um, now this nine is placing a nine here, which is also placing an eight, which is placing an eight. Good grief. Okay, so now these are green digits. I can see that because we've got all the high digits used. So, and um, one, two, three, and four. That's not four. Oh, this is one, two, three, or four as well. So, which is the high digit? Six is missing. So, that's got to be a six. It's almost like two puzzles, isn't it? We've almost got. Um, 
a puzzle involving five, six, seven, eights, and nines, and a puzzle involving ones, twos, threes, fours. What are these squares then? One, three, four, and six again. So the six might be placeable. Uh, no, apparently not. What about six over there? Yes, six over there is placeable. So that is six placed there. I need to place nine in this column. You can see it can only go here. So this is a three or a four. This is one, three or four, presumably therefore. That's got to be one, two, three or four. I might get rid of the greens now. Oh no, because I should be able to get the middle nine. Yeah, okay, let's get the middle nine. And ones, threes and ones, twos and threes here. So there's a two vertical. What on earth are we doing now? Ah, seven I must be able to get. That's a seven. Sorry, got interrupted. You could probably uh, you could probably hear by what if you're if you're listening closely. There was a there was a trampoline war which is still ongoing outside, and I'm afraid I had to pop downstairs to deal with that. <laughs> so um, where were we? We were we were getting there. We got we looks like I've just got a seven here. Uh, what was I doing? I don't actually know. It looks like I was doing some pencil marking and I got a seven. So, right, come on, Simon. Remember what? Oh, okay, yes. We, we were getting all the high digits done, weren't we? So now we've got to get ones, twos, threes, and fours by the looks of things. Oh, I thought I was, I thought I was just going to be able to place four in this box, but I can't. Look, I've got four looking up at it, but not four actually, not actually placed. Um... So have I done all of the high digits now? The answer is, I think it's yes, isn't it? Four, fours. Oh, and I can get a four there by Sudoku. So that's not a four. So I've got a one, three pair. I've got a three up here by Sudoku. I've got no threes over here by Sudoku. Oh, I've got three here by Sudoku. No three here by Sudoku. One, two pair in the in this column. One, two pair in this row. That's not one. That's not one or two. Um, and hang on a moment. Let me just spot something. I'm sure there is a way through this. I am absolutely sure we've done the hard bit. It must be the break. We must have got through the break-in. The thing that makes you cry is the break-in. It's not going to be getting, getting the ones, twos, threes, and fours. Um, I'm tempted actually to get rid of the coloring here. I'm finding this a bit distracting. So maybe we get rid of the, get rid of the coloring and try and solve the puzzle. So We've got loads of ones, twos, three. How many fours have we got? We've got four in the grid. And we have got to place actually loads of them. They're all over the place. What about threes? Ah, I've got four threes. Yes, that can't be a three, look. Which means that No, doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. Never mind. Um X-wing on threes in, ah, useless X-wing on threes in columns three and seven, bobbins. Okay, so all I noticed there was if you look at this column and this column, where do the threes go? They align, they align in their rows. And that means that we could look at these rows and eliminate three from anywhere other than a purple cell. But unfortunately, that square cannot be a three anyway, so this is not helpful. Um, Oh, two is looking vertical there, so that square can't be a two. So now, uh, no. Um, no. <laughs> no is the short way of saying we can't do anything there. So this actually doesn't feel very easy. Um, it's likely, it's probably not an X-wing, it's more likely to be a Y-wing or a bent triple. 
So can we see anything that looks bent triply? So no is the short answer, but I'm even trying to see an example of what could constitute a bent triple. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. I mean, this would be a bent triple on one, two, and four. You can see that the, if these were all in the same column, we would immediately understand that those three cells could only be one, two, and four, and we could eliminate one, two, and four from the rest of the uh, the rest of that row or column. Here, I mean, this isn't a real bent triple, so it's much less useful. But this is the sort of thing I'm looking for because there, there is logic you can do as a result of that. Uh, no. Uh, good grief. This is not... I wasn't expecting this. This is a bit of a sting in the tail. Um, three looks vertically here. Two looks vertically here. Four looks vertically there. I've got a three, four pair here. So no, I don't have an X-wing on threes there. Fours, no. Four. Fours, right. I, I can get rid of a four from there for what it's worth. Is that useful? There's an, and that's because there's an X-wing on fours in columns three and seven as well. So again, just to run through the logic, you can see four in this column is only in one of two places. Four in this column is only in one of two places. So in this row, we expect there to be one four altogether. In this row, we expect there to be one four altogether. So that's two fours for these two rows. And we know that the purples contain two fours. So we can't have a digit four here, or that would be a third four in the row. So this is one or two now just doesn't do anything. Um, is that true though? Two, one, four, one, three. Right. Okay, it does a little something to that cell. Because this cell can't be a one I don't think and that's because it breaks that cell if this is a one that would be a two and that would be a three and all those three cells see that cell so that's not going to work so that can't be a one so this is a two or a four that's a two or a four this can't be a two so I've now got a one three pair in this column and that means that don't know what that means actually two is um, two in this box is horizontal so that's not a two so this is one off oh no uh, I thought I thought I was seeing a bent triple there but I'm not ah Okay, that's a bent triple, isn't it? Two, four. Yeah, okay, that is a bent triple. Good grief. This is really difficult. This is really difficult at the end of a puzzle that I wouldn't describe as a walk in the park. But this cell is the one I want to look at. Now, and in conjunction with those two cells, if this is, and this is a bent triple, in the sense that if again, if these were all in the same column, we'd immediately understand they were a one, two, four triple and we would do something with it. Well, here it's not as powerful as that, but you can see whatever this is, if this is a two, this square here is a one. But if this square is, if this is a four, this square here is a one. So at least one of those two cells is a one. But this cell sees both of those cells. So there is no way this cell can be a one. And you can prove that to yourself by trying it. If you put one here, this becomes two, this becomes four, and that cell has no possible value. So that square is a two, which means that square is a one, four, two. And that might, yeah, that's a one, that's a two. So this is not a two anymore. 1, 4, looking at this square, which becomes a 2, that becomes a 1, that becomes a 4, that becomes, aha, 2, 4, come on, 2, 
one three four three one four three i think we might have done it i'm not sure but i am hopeful now we haven't got many digits left to place don't be deadly uh no it's not deadly oh that's good uh three and that should be two and that is the puzzle solved yes <laughs> That's, that's completely, completely insane, that puzzle. Absolute madness. Start to finish. I mean, the start is wonderful. The start involving the one, and I think I could have used the two straight away. I didn't spot that I could use the two straight away, but the one and the two and these bulbs, it's magical what Totally Normal Cat has done. In fact, what is the most dangerous creature on the earth? And it's either, it's not a fin swordfish, is it? It is a totally normal cat. That is completely crazy. Oh, there's more fighting going on. Hang on, I might have to go sooner than I want to because I just want to think about this puzzle a bit more. Um, um, yeah, so, so, oh yeah, that, that's the other thing I want to mention is that the the wonderful, wonderful revelation that I had when when I realised that there had to be a four on in those four digits, and therefore there couldn't be a four in that string of digits because it would be a second four on the stems of the thermos. I mean that is, I mean that is just wizardry. It is wizardry. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you stayed with stayed with me this long and listening to the ravings of a lunatic. I do appreciate it. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.